Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we know how to calculate the heat flow across multiple layers of a spherical shell, now here we have an interesting contraption. We have a spherical submarine. The outer radius of it is 1.5 meters. It has a steel rim that's 10, uh, not 10, but 2 centimeters thick. And we have a rubber uh, insulated material that is also 2 centimeters thick. Notice that the outside radius is 1.5 meters, so I have 2 centimeters of steel and 2 centimeters of rubber. Assuming that the person inside the submarine plus all the equipment generates 1500 watts. And so if the temperature on the outside is 0 degrees centigrade, what would be the equilibrium temperature on the inside? And of course, we have our equation where the heat flow through the various layers is the difference in the temperature between the outside and the inside, well, inside and the outside, and then, of course, the heat resistances of each layer. Notice that the conductivity, the heat conductivity of steel is 20 watts per meter per kelvin, and the conductivity for rubber is 0.2 watts per meter per kelvin. So how do we do that? Well, we simply plug it all into the equation, and of course, we're looking for the difference in the temperature, which means that the difference in the temperature, delta T, is equal to the heat flow, Q, Q, uh, Q dot, which is going to be the 1500 watts, times the sum of the two heat resistances. So that would be delta X1, which is the thickness of the first layer, divided by 4 pi K1 times AB, plus the thickness of the second layer, divided by 4 pi k2 times, and that would of course be AB, that would be B times C, like this. Now we have to be careful to plug in the correct values. So what is the difference in the temperature? Well, first of all, we have 1500 watts multiplied times delta x1, it's 2 centimeters, which is 0 0.02 meters. I'm going to leave off the units to make it a little bit cleaner. 4 pi times k1. Now k1 is the inside layer and the k1 inside layer is 0 0.20 times the distance to the inside that would be a so notice that this here would be a this here would be b and this one would be c so from a to b that would be 1.46 in terms of meters times 1.48 like this plus the delta x of the second layer which is the same thickness divided by 4 pi times k2 now the second layer is steel and so the k for steel is 20 times b times c which is 1.48 multiplied times 1.50 all right so what will this be equal to so let's calculate this first. So we have uh, 0 0.02 divided by 4 divided by pi divided by 0.2 divided by 1.46 and divided by 1.48 equals 3.6828 times 10 to the minus 3. 3.6828. 3.6828 times 10 to the minus 3 plus... Now we'll calculate that one. So I have 4 times pi times 20 times 1.48 times 1.5. Take the inverse of that and multiply it times 0.02 and we get 3.5846. 3.5846 times 10 to the minus 5. And this is going to be multiplied times 1500. And that will give us the delta T. Notice I just leave off the units to keep it a little bit cleaner. So we're going to add that. So plus 3.58. Oh, I already had it on my calculator. I should have kept it. Well, anyway, 3.6828 e to the 3 minus plus 3.5. 5846 e to the 5 minus equals times 1500 equals 5.58 centigrade degrees. So the delta T is equal to 5.58 
centigrade degrees. That's the difference in the temperature between the inside and the outside. And since the outside is zero degrees centigrade, then T on the inside is going to be T on the outside plus the difference in the temperature. So therefore, T on the inside is going to be 5.58 centigrade degrees. And notice again what we have ignored in this, in this case is the convection of the heat coming off the steel on the outside going into the water. There are some convection considerations there we should normally consider. We just ignored it. We simply only did conductivity. But then later on, we can also take into account that there's some convection concerns that we should take, take into consideration. And we'll do that on the next series with heat flow. But this is good enough for now when we simply think about the heat transfer across the multiple layers of, yes indeed, that interesting spherical submarine. And that's how it's done.